Hey there, gang. Today's video is going to be a rather long and probably unnecessary deep dive into a new build that I've put together following the new Alan Wake patch. So for those that don't know, Grim Embrace just got a very strong buff, and now after hooking a survivor for the first time for every survivor, you will now block every generator for 12 seconds once you move beyond 16 meters. Now this is a big deal, because being that you're able to block every generator, one of Clown's biggest weaknesses is his lack of map pressure. Clown does not have any map mobility, and in order to get any type of boost to map mobility, you have to forsake some of your chase pressure going into that next chase. This is because you have to use some bottles uh, uh, in accordance with your current bottle count, and that means that before you end up probably getting a hit, you're going to have to reload some time in between. And really good survivors are going to capitalize around this. They're not going to let you get a free reload, uh, most likely unless they're in a very, very bad tile, and that means that you're going to lose some chase time on top of that. So given when you take everything into, into consideration, you're probably extending your chases, your chases even longer using your bottles for map mobility just so you can start your chase time sooner, which is again part of what makes Grim Embrace so good. What you can do now is you can block every generator without having to engage with a survivor who would otherwise be, uh, who would take too much time to directly, you know, start a chase with them, push them off a generator. All of the generators are going to get blocked. And you can now take advantage of Clown's primary strength, his chase pressure, by pulling all of the survivors to you. See, while camping and tunneling isn't exactly something that is probably very fun or favorable for the game with respect to a playstyle that people want to do and go against, it is something that Clown is sadly reliant upon. And being able to block every generator without having to actively pressure it means that you can then proxy the hook and make the unhook afterward even harder. Further, you can now attempt to tunnel that person uh, afterward in order to ensure that you can rehook them and get the most pressure out of your time. Probably the biggest contributor as far as to what makes tunneling so valuable on Clown is that it requires the teammates of the survivor being tunneled in order to insert themselves into your chase in order to prevent you from killing their teammates. And the more survivors who end up doing this, the less survivors who are doing generators. Further, depending on the displacement from you and the survivor that you're tunneling out from everyone else who are doing the, those generators, this may require them to spend spend time crossing the map in order to prevent you from doing what I previously described. And that is ultimately what makes tunneling so strong, because otherwise, if you were not tunneling a survivor, if you were not camping, and if you were not playing into the strategy of pulling survivors to you, then ultimately what you're doing is you're playing into the survivor's favor. You're going to be then having to cross over to them. You give them opportunity to pre-run. You give them opportunity to go to strong tiles. You know, depending on whether or not they're able to calm out what it is that you're doing, they're going to tell their teammates that you're coming which gives them time to prepare and that is not something that clown is really capable of dealing with at the moment you know, survivors that are very coordinated and that they and they if they operate efficiently you're going to struggle now all of this being said grim embrace alone is not the only part of this build that makes it so strong again it is the synergy the grim embrace has with other perks that really allows it to pop off so in addition to Grim Embrace blocking every generator, another perk which also blocks a lot of generators is Dead Man's Switch. Now, typically on its own, Dead Man's Switch is not all too powerful because Clown does not, like I said, have the map mobility to make Dead Man's Switch activate. He has to actually physically cross the map, right, in order to push a survivor off, and the time that it takes for him to do that ticks into the time of that Dead Man's Switch. It's not as if Dead Man's Switch is going to activate the moment that you push a survivor off a generator. The time that it has is ticking down before you allow it to activate on a uh, generator by pushing a survivor off of it. So in order to really get the most value out of Dead Man Switch, that's where Grim Embrace comes into play. See, when you move beyond that 16 meters and it blocks all of the generators from Grim Embrace, if a survivor was previously on it, when they get kicked off by a Grim Embrace, they're not just activating Grim Embrace, they're activating Dead Man Switch. So the generator is not going to be blocked for just 12 seconds, it's going to get blocked for 30 seconds. And that's a big deal because every generator getting worked on is now blocked for 30 seconds. Now, what happens if that generator got hit by pain res? See, that's why pain res is in this build. Pain res is 25% of a generator. That is, on average, 22.5 seconds. So essentially, again, to recap what you're now doing, you're, you would be taking off 22.5 seconds of a generator. 
you would then be blocking that generator for an extra 12 seconds, which is anywhere from over 10 to 15 percent of the generator in of itself. And then lastly, you've got that extra 30 seconds in the event that they were to have activated that instead of just the Grim Embrace. What you have as a result of this, again, remember, Clown does not have mat mobility. You have unrivaled pressure on generators without having to give anything up. The closest you have to really give anything up with respect to anything at all is the opportunity cost associated with your build. Because again, you have to take up the perk slots, right? You have to give up three perk slots for Dead Man Switch, Pain Res, and Grim Embrace. It doesn't entirely come for free in that regard, and that means that you can't take fun builds, right? We were experimenting with a full chase build recently, so you know you can't really run anything like this in order to get that. But what you see in turn is objectively across the board a significantly higher kill rate. My uh, kill average with this build, especially compared to this build that I've been running for the last couple weeks, is astronomically different. I think almost every single match I played in both settings that I've ran this, excuse me, two sittings, I have not lost but maybe one or two games in probably six hours of gameplay. I am killing almost every survivor, winning my matches with three to four generators remaining. Because the thing about this build, this build only really has one significant downside. And the downside to this build is it doesn't have corrupt intervention. This means that if you have a if you do not have a bad early game, if you have a very if you identify your first survivor and start your first chase very quickly, if you are able to down that survivor very quickly, you are able to get such a dominating control over the match throughout the mid and the late game because all of your perks are going to have presence throughout that entire point. See, corrupt, the main value to corrupt is when you have a stalled and poor performance in the early game because you are stopping that early game momentum from the survivors. But if you don't need that pressure, if you are able to find that survivor quickly, get a fast chase, hook them, and then you play around what I was talking about with the zoning and the camping and the tunneling, this build goes crazy because survivors can't wait that long. They can't. It's not, it's just going to take too long. You know, if the survivor you are tunneling especially doesn't have anti-tunnel perks, it's going to take too long for them to get the gens done. What happens if survivors body block, right? What happens if the survivors go to support their teammate who doesn't have anti-tunnel perks and they body block and they say even force you to where you can't tunnel? You have to then go for the trade, hook their teammate. Well, even then, you're still in a fantastic position. Why? Because what's going to happen is on your very first hook, you're going to apply pain res, potentially. From that pain res, you could potentially apply dead man switch. Further, Grim Embrace. Grim Embrace, blocking every generator. That means that if they are working on generators and they are attempting to greed through you changing targets, they're not going to get value from that because they're not going to be able to do those gens. And if they were doing those gens, it's going to get blocked for longer. And if they were doing those gens and it was a scourge hook, you've knocked off significant progress. Does it really start to kind of come full circle? See, that's that's kind of the big, the big cluster about this build is that, again, recap, pain res into either DMS, into Grim Embrace, into DMS. The only way that you play around this build and don't get hit with the DMS is you have to wait out the Grim Embrace. And if you are consistently waiting out Grim Embrace, especially after a pain res, you're allowing this regression to go through. And lastly, you are consistently going to be giving this perk free value every single time. And in the event that you decide to play into countering the value from Grim Embrace, not in the early game, but in the mid game, especially when you are injured, if the killer recognizes this and he isn't camping or tunneling and then say because this would be what a survivor is say already dead if he's not camping and tunneling at this point because he knows that he doesn't need to do that and he's able to snowball off of injuries from any survivors that are still remaining he's going to come right for you and you're going to now get the uh, grim embrace and the dms applied but he's just going to snowball even further off of that and probably win the game that's what makes this so great and coup de gras especially coup de gras helps with the tunneling it's a lot harder to counter tunneling when Clown's able to just lunge around the body blocks, especially when he's able to play significantly more pre-drop pallets. So that's that's just really one way to kind of look at this. Now, that being said, this build isn't set in stone. You could make some very uh, variative changes. You know, Coup de Gras is not entirely 100% um, needed for this build. I was actually experimenting with an alternative perk. 
I really like Thrilling Tremors. A lot of people say they don't like Thrilling Tremors with this build because it is a little bit of anti-synergy with, uh, with Pain Res, but it really depends on how the survivors are playing. You know, remember, if two survivors are working on a generator and they are split, then you aren't going to have the issue of pain resonance not hitting a generator because very typically you should have that generator that would be hit by pain resonance. It's not going to be blocked by thrilling tremors. You know, some survivors may be off, but not everyone should. There should be a generator that does get hit. Now, what happens if they're trying to play around the pain res, right? They're getting off early because they see someone goes down. You can block them from getting progress with the thrilling tremors. And then, you know, that's the thing. If afterward, you, you then have, like I said, the, gr the Grim Embrace and the Dead Man Switch, even if you don't get the Pain Res. See, when you, when you put all of these gen blocking perks together, it makes it so hard for a survivor to figure out when it is that they can be doing generators and when it is that they should be doing generators because, you know, you're not just going around and starting chases willy-nilly. You're taking their teammates out very efficiently and you're playing uh, in the most viable manner possible so survivors need to be on point in order to counter that now what i've got for you guys are three very strong matches that really demonstrate how effective this build can be remember keep in mind i've got 3500 hours on clown alone the first match uses coup de gras instead of thrilling tremors however like i said I did want to try a perk that does not incorporate coup de gras because I know a lot of my viewers don't really necessarily like running this perk for whatever reason, and being able to run a perk in place of coup gives more flexibility for those people. So I think you're going to really enjoy this match and these builds. Again, I'm, my apologies if it's a little bit too stinky, but you know we're all about performance this time around. All right, first game, y'all. The clown and the sea abilities. I'm sure they will, and oh my gosh, we can already like immediately. Like, whoa, damn. See, one of the nice and convenient yeah. things about the increased FOV is y'all won't notice the 3% speed hack I turn it. Wait, what? I wonder how many people actually do think I'm being serious with it. Hey, hold up. I gotta adjust to this FOV. Hell, I may need to put my glasses on with this higher FOV. I'm not even kidding when I say that. We really doing this out the gate. I have to come around. I swear she's gonna FTP fucking buckle up, isn't she? She gets sick pick up here. She don't get this even with background. All right, we gotta hurry though, cause remember I didn't have uh, corrupt. They could be doing some. One, two, three. I think we're good actually on this. We're good. So we get this. I want to come kick this. There we go. Oh, well, there we go. I'm going to get ready to come back. I've got her in a nice little corner. We are back to camping and tunneling, by the way. Okay, so that's blocked by DMS. Get ready to come back. We're going to see how we do without uh, dealing with body blocks, by the way, without what's it called. Coming in for the body block, coming in for the support. Oh! Yeah. FTP buckle up, please. Oh no. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know why I thought he was gonna CJ without the thing. Oh shit! We go corner on this. By the way, one thing that is a little bit important to keep in mind is we're not gonna get Grim Embrace on this one. We will still, however, get the what's it called. There we go, DMS value right there. So DMS kicking in. I want to come this way. We've got her in a corner, so I want to actually try to push people off gens real quick. Look at that. I'm going to come kick this gen. We'll get it back to zero while we wait. Remember, if uh, someone trades, we can always pain res and then get Grim Embrace afterward to help us get our momentum. Which almost makes me wonder, oh, Sulfuric Acid Val could potentially be good here, huh? We go back. 
Probably could be camping a bit more aggressively, but I thought we could. Cool with this. I am actually kicking. I'll get this hit right now. It's actually good. I would love some injuries right now because we a lot of injuries when I get my first Q stacks are going to enable some crazy fucking snowball possibly. I can actually, I will take this for a pain res. This is actually good. We go for pain res right here. Look at this. Pain res, stall out the first gen. If anything, we go for the pain res closer to the person who just got unhooked. This is good. They won't be able to heal in time. We'll be able to stall that gen. We'll apply Grim Embrace and uh, Dead Mans and we'll just keep things at like uh, five gems. They likely went this way to heal. I see him. There we go. Apply uh, Grim Embrace and DMS. I actually thought she was going to play, uh, play pot a bit differently. It's tough. We get rid of the non scare chick here. And all right. First kill. We also apply DMS. Love to see it. I want to go look for the injury, believe it or not. We can probably find someone who's injured and or working on a, a more central area of the map. DMS active, good. Love to see it. Good stuff. I knew she wasn't going to take that. Good stuff. Oh, she actually got the yellow, by the way. Good thing we lost that gen. That gen was actually... Ooh, could he not do... He must not have been able to do it earlier. Oh, my gosh. I tried to get in front of her, but I actually aimed right into her. That's on me. I tried to literally get in front of her so she couldn't get to Shaq. Damn. Okay, dude. I didn't mean to actually hit her there while she had endurance. You have to drop Shack Pallet here. What? 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 Oh, right, 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 right. No one's there, so we want to get this. Admittedly, good recovery, but we've got three people injured. Yeah, four of the people buckle up, let's uh, go burr. He's got window on this side. Fuck, I think I messed that up. Is he a freaking... What is he at? What do they have? No, they don't have object. They use what's it called. Okay, I'm just gonna have to leave. I need to go back and find one of the other people that are... Beautiful. Ooh. All right, now this will be another pain rest, but we do kind of need to hurry. I'm actually gonna go for the. We're gonna go for corner. Actually, we want to go corner. Actually, no, no, we don't go corner. We go deep. We aggress. A lot of injuries and everything. We go deep. Not too deep though, because we need to apply the regression first. There we go. DMS right there. Move a bit forward to apply grim embrace. Beautiful. I want to get eyes on everybody before I actually commit. That's DMS. Let me go check over here. I think they went to go heal potentially now. Mm -hmm. They uh, definitely, I think, went inward to heal. No? Or med kit? I don't know. I don't want to overcommit. And that's probably my promise. I'm not making a committed decision. Yeah, they definitely went to go heal. We're just going to go see if we can kick this. Let me see. Oh my gosh. Can my bottles not fucking screw me over like this? Holy shit, dude. Got to say, unhook's happening right now. Another injury right now would be pretty peak. Question is, do they take the body block at the right time? Why do I not hear her footsteps? 
good stuff. Aim this way. I know he's trying to get something going. Oh! And we hook right here. I'd like to go corner, but I don't want to somehow risk some weird shit. We just get this. DMS. Good stuff. It is giving me DMS value every time. We know where everybody is now. Is that freaking Shadow Step? No. Shadow Step would mean we don't see scratch marks. We rotate back now. He's healthy. He's the one I'm concerned about. We also know that they're split. Fucked up my yellow, oh my gosh. They're coming in around because I fucked up my bottles. Oh my gosh, that was so bad on my part. Oh well. Can I? I have one bottle, hold on. Hmm, interesting strat. She's going all the way right. What are these scratch marks? Why can I not see the scratch marks? There we go. Reload right here, good. She's trying to deep wound. She must have dead hard. Good shit. I don't see anybody within 16. Pick up right now. There we go. Good stuff. Get this hook right here. Save our skirt hooks. We still have one painter. Well. Now slider slides. This build looks super fun. Gonna try it. Yeah, this was something I put together myself. I know it's obviously not exactly creative. Anyone could have probably put together these three perks. But I mean, hey, it's actually working out really well. They give me a whole lot of value here, too, from a lot of my perks. Mm. Good stuff. And this team played really well. This was a good team. This is the other pain res, isn't it? Good shit, good shit, good shit. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful, gang? Isn't that beautiful map pressure? Isn't that such some beautiful map pressure? Uh, and it's already begun, gang. It's already begun. It's actually cathartic at this point. Getting complaints about tunneling and camping after the shit we've gone through these last couple weeks. Oh, it's cathartic. Keep it coming. GG's. <laughs> it's already begun. The game's not even over. I run Zancho to kill out. I can understand. Zancho Tactics helps with uh, reading on how to make certain decisions and chase and whatnot. Think of it as kind of like Windows of Opportunity for Survivor and how you would play in your chase as a survivor, but for killer and using your bottles as clown, you know? Oh, thank you for to see me all the time. Oh, I'm glad, Bruce. I'm really glad to see you. Welcome, welcome. Who needs this team? Actually, it's some pretty... So this is my first match using this build, and pretty much everything that I talked about previously is what we saw come true within this match itself. To start things off, we were on Wrecker's Yard, which is a pretty small map and honestly really great for Clown overall. It's probably one of his best maps, even probably I would say even after the rework. It's mostly just a bunch of jungle gems and pallet uh, pallet loops that are spread across the map with a bus loop or a or some other type of landmark tile in the corners. But other than that, I mean, the corners are very dangerous. You get a survivor hooked in the corner, which is what we had on a few occasions, and the following unhooks become really dangerous. 
if a survivor does that is gets unhooked from this corner does not have any anti-tunnel perks they very much so become reliant on their teammates to protect them because they don't really have much going for them when it comes to safely getting out of that corner assuming the killer is camping and tunneling which was what we were doing because as y'all could see we got a very strong and early pain res on the Michaela. And after that pain res, not only were we able to tunnel her for the second hook, but what we saw in between, we got the Grim Embrace, we got the pain res, we got the DMS, and our pain res, DMS, and Grim Embrace was just constantly rolling. And after the first hook, the survivors could tell we were looking to camp and tunnel, so what did they decide to do? They showed up to body block. However, as we could see, the body block didn't really, cre didn't really do anything for them. You know, remember, we have Grim Embrace and we have Dead Man Switch to pull them to do that. But if they are doing that, they're not doing gens anyway. So they have to make the decision, do I actually take the health state and potentially need to heal afterward and then go do on the gens, you know, like either injured or not? Or do I try to just wait out the, the gen progress and, and sit on the gens entirely? It becomes a, a question in the moment that some survivors just aren't really ready for, you know. And if the survivor getting tunneled, like I said, isn't ready for it. That's where things can finally now start for Clown to snowball out of control. And, you know, like I said, this is not something that was previously possible before due to the lack of Clown's map mobility. But now, due to this build, we are able to create that pressure on our generators. So, this was my very first uh, match using this build. I decided for my next match to make a, uh, some few changes. You know, the, the survivors in this match had some very, very strong perks, as we can see. We had some meta perks with the For the People and the Buckle Ups, with the, uh, the Dead Hards and everything, and the Adrenalines. You know, this next match, I ended up swapping out Coup de Gras, which would have, against a team like this, made things a little bit more difficult. You know, Coup de Gras is able to secure some very necessary... Uh, early hits that you may need when you're going against survivors that say have buckle up and for the people but one of probably the the some of the better value you're going to see from thrilling tremors in place of coup de gras is that we are playing on a much larger map than Wreckers Yard. On this next match, we are going to be playing on Area Crows. And so having Thrilling a Tremors to block whatever generators are across the map, assuming that at that moment it isn't being worked on, that's going to do so much for stacking on top of all of the other gen blocking that we have within our build itself. And I see someone I know in the community. Literally, their title is like, Grim Embrace and DMS is busted as fuck. Like, paraphrasing, right? <laughs> and it's just like, yeah. Yep, Grim Embrace Dead Man Switch is fucking busted, and I love it, dude. I fucking love it. Now, we're still playing Clown, and we have to compensate for our flaws, but still. Oh, man. This combo feels fucking good, dude. Damn, she really didn't want to eat that pink. I knew she was holding W, I knew she wasn't playing pallet. Reload off of this, because she's definitely going to either play pallet here or hold W, and we- Yeah, yeah. And we need more bottles, we can't cancel that. The fuck? Good shit. Suckable balls, what a- Yo, Yui, hold up! Hey, Yui, what is his name? Hold up! Really strong pain rest here, by the way. You're a first. If you get a hook like this without kicking these doors yet, you kick this shit right now. These doors go right now. Right now. Now, we're prepping with a reload on a bottle. I'm ready for someone to unhook potentially here. I'm going to actually check this corner, but that shit's got to fucking go because you want to be able to play in this area of the map if they come here after getting unhooked, you know what I mean? I'm actually not going to go for the other door simply because I genuinely don't think it's safe. I'm afraid with my mobility, if I go to kick that door, she gets unhooked and maybe she chains to kill Shack side, right? That could actually be too dangerous. So instead, I'm going to actually play corner here. We're going to actually camp this proxy, camp this gen. This is still regressing. Good, good, good. It's not so much about hitting second. I want to get a hook, uh, get at least one hit in, one health state before from someone else as they unhook. You should genuinely accept the or genuinely accept you're going to be trading, right? Like you're going to be like getting a down early. Get these pinks gone up. Hold on. I want to make sure they don't have a chance of actually getting here before she hits second. Good shit. Now we can afford to be a little bit less. We can afford to push out a bit because now we don't want her sitting on until she hits the next state. We want to look to see if we can get a health state or two. We want to confirm second. 
Get a hit onto Steve. Good. Now we go back. Now we go back. I'm actually not going to commit because I know someone's going to want to definitely come right now. And if not, we just confirm second here. We've got two injuries, which means if these people don't heal, they definitely can't unhook. So we just sit at proxy right here. And that's probably a wrap for her at least. She wasn't playing too bad. Keep in mind, this Yui was actually playing really well. She really was. She had a pretty strong first chase. She had some really good decisions. They get two gens, which is unironically the best thing they can do right now. But that's really all they can do is uh, just get the gens done in the background. I'm trying to see if I can watch. They are looking to finally get these heals. I don't know if these heals are going to be enough. And we're going to be free preemptively putting these pinks so they can't go around. There we go. She dies on hook first hook. There we go. Good shit, good shit. Not typically how I would like to necessarily do things, but it is kind of how we had to do it in this case. Play around that. This is actually, this team is actually playing as uh, efficient, all things considered. This is how they should be playing right now. We don't kick yet because it's actually a little bit... I'll kick now. Oh, we definitely... Oh, getting this kick now is amazing. Oh my gosh. Act stupid, act dumb. Act stupid. Good stuff. Act stupid, act dumb. The fuck? Well, she actually, she was she was ready for me to know she was there. I'm not gonna lie, I expected her to hold W. Good stuff. She's not actually playing Kyle, she's crossing. That's why we set up the yellow this way. I don't think she actually gets this. <laughs> this is an amazing pain res. This is an amazing pain res. We need to hook right now. We know where they're at. We go for that gen next. They're injured, likely looking to reset on that side of the map too. So we get this right now. Since we know that she is there. Beautiful. Now we definitely go this way. I think I actually just saw, saw Kate too. Cross through this way. I would like to kick that door eventually. They are likely healing over by the block gen if I had to gander. I'll kick that one gen soon when I can when I cross back. I just wanted to check to make sure if I caught him healing in corner. Steve is still injured, which is making me think at this point they're not looking to heal. Maybe he's looking to attempt. He's looking to attempt the save, the sneaky save, because he knows that he kind of has to at this point. She hits second. Good shit. We know Steve is over here, so I'm not going to reload just, just yet. I thought maybe he's breaking a bit away. Maybe he is actually crossing right. Steve is nearby. We know he's definitely nearby. She dies on hook. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't tell for a minute what they were planning there. Did they bring you here? No, they didn't. Just ran a chance. When I started streaming it, about three years, uh, so years ago. It's it's a little bit more than three years. It's like I, kind of a guesstimation. I really have no idea, like, specifically. I didn't exactly curve that like I wanted. That's Sprint Burst. Holy shit, Sprint Burst into my pink. Wow, that's actually really bad. Yeah, that was a really, really... <laughs> that was a bad read on her part. Like, she didn't, I think, know that I was going to expect her to do that. If she would have not vaulted, it would have been a lot harder to get that hit. GG's. This build, this build goes hard. I fucking love this build, dude. This build actually goes hard. By the way, we get that, that blocking. How are you doing? This team had the great early game. Their early game was actually really damn good. Did y'all notice the gen progress they got? Like, they had, I think, the gens done on perfect pace with someone being camped on first hook. They actually really did. You know, someone obviously needed to come in last second and make at least the bare minimum, like, trade, so that way it stalled things out, right? But, like, really, genuinely, all things considered, they got the gens done about as fast as you probably could without toolboxes and shit. I think we might keep it up for a bit. I definitely like it now that I'm not giving up a perk slot for it, you know what I mean? Wigan knows if you say so, okay, we'll put it on next game. Now I'll get in closer. It's about to take a sip of my drink. 
What? I feel like I've played against a Steve before. I feel like I've played against a Steve before, y'all. I can't remember. Do y'all recognize his name from my stream? I don't know. Would you use a perk slot to keep your add-ons? The fuck? W what is that supposed to mean? I don't understand what you mean by that. Oh, look at that cross-up, y'all. Look at that cross-up. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, the practice. Cross-up through the tree. On second floor, was he? Was he? What the hell is he doing up there? Y'all, he found the he, he found the third escape. Remember when the dev said there's a third escape in DBD? He found the one on this map. Oh, you mean like a ward. Like a black ward is a perk slot. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. Cammy. Cammy, if that was a legit thing during the blood point events, you bet your ass I'd be going three perks with that. And I'd be going blood point offerings. I don't think you really... Like, with all respect, that's a cute idea, but you need to understand that would break the blood point economy, you could call it, for killers like me and everything especially, because... Like, you already see how I'm gaining as it is. I'm gaining cigar boxes and stuff. Imagine how many more I would gain. And imagine if it was, like, eerie add-ons, you know? For people that had P100s. That would actually be a really, really bad thing. I would love it, but it would be so bad, you know? Oh, that would be so bad. He is up there, you're right. I guess he's in a locker. No, oh, I genuinely love that shit, but it would, it would break the game. Yeah, GG to this team. They, they did play well. Like I said, the early game on their part was fucking on point. The early game was on point. They actually were doing really, really good. That's how you play against Clown. You split, you do the gens, and they got them done literally like... I mean, on regular as you could. Say, did you do upload? See, look at that, too. A dr Y'all, it's a bingo! Boom, 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 boom! Yo, they, they read the patch notes. They saw the roadmap. They saw Adrenaline's getting nerfed, and they were ready. Yeah, poor Yui, though. Oh, my gosh. I actually just realized everybody on this team. How did everybody get less than 10K? Wait, 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 wait hold up. How did everybody? They got two gens done. They Didn't they even get some healing? How did they get less than 10K? I actually just feel a little bit bad for them. So this match is probably a fantastic textbook example of what you can expect to happen with this build, assuming you go against survivors who attempt to stick on the objective instead of coordinating a save on their teammates. The thing about this build and what really allowed us to pop off and get these, uh, get the camping and what made the camping so successful in the UE was let's recount what happened at the start of the game. First, we hit the Jill. Jill leaves. Then we commit to the Yui. We down her for, through two health states. We hook her in the corner. At this point, Jill is injured. We have two healthy survivors that is not the person on the hook. One of those healthy survivors comes in and they try to see if they can get a save by themselves. The other healthy survivor is doing generators along with that other injured survivor. Everybody is split. Because we get the tag on to Steve, now we have two injured survivors. We have an injured Jill and we have an injured Steve. That means that nobody can come in for the save. The only person who can come in for the save is the Kate, but Kate can't actually do it by herself without trading. And what happens if Kate was to have done that even though she did it in this case? Well, then we would have, we could have slugged her. We could have then gone for the Yui afterward because after all, remember, she is on death hook. We let her hit second. And then, you know, from there, we could go for Kate, and we could then apply the pain res into the Grim Embrace into the DMS again. Now, what happens if we couldn't have reached the Jill? What happens if, the, or excuse me, if we weren't able to reach the Yui, right? What happened if the Yui, because of the Kate and, you know, the forced trade, she got to a safe tile? You know, perhaps we weren't even on Area Crows. Let's even go into that uh, uh, perspective presumption. We would just go back to the Kate. We would hook the Kate. We would pain res into DMS on that very same hook along with Grim Embrace, and then we would go seek out the Yui. So we have that alternative, but further, you know, given that that isn't what happened, let's go back to what did happen. So again, we have an injured Jill. She can't go for the save. Steve wants to go for the save. He gets hit. He now can't go for the save. Jill can't go for the save. Yui hits second. 
you know, that part of why I went for that Steve was because I knew that since the second was happening, I didn't want her to actually die on hook. I wanted to get some free injuries, snowball, and then tunnel her afterward. But instead, they wanted to do something different. They wanted to get as much gens as they could done first. If anything, they were willing to let her die on hook so they could get gen progress. But what happened as a result of that decision? It didn't matter. They got two gens done, which was very efficient. I even made sure to mention the survivors were very, very gen efficient when it came to actually getting the gens done with respect to how long the match had, uh, had uh, progressed so far. But we just kept blocking them. After we killed the Yui, you know, we went for another survivor. We downed them. We hooked them. And just like with the Yui, Grim Embrace, Pain Res, DMS. They didn't get any more gen stun. You know, as far as to why are we running Flask of Bleach in this build, we run Flask of Bleach to compensate for the lack of coup. A lot of people are running, why do you have Flask in this compared to the last one? I don't typically like running Flask of Bleach when I'm running coup because coup is very very excellent for singular tiles. You shouldn't need Flask of Bleach around pre-drop pallets, and you're going to get more mileage as a result by running Garage Makeup Kit in its place. Now, with Thrilling Tremors and being able to run Flask of Bleach, I feel like this gave us more control in that macro sense on larger maps like this, and probably, I would say, had a difference in us not losing as many generators. Would we had one still had we taken Coup instead of Thrilling with Garish Mega Pit? Very much likely so. But it's an alternative that y'all can see works and is available to people who do play Clown and perhaps don't run, run don't want to run Coup. Now, this last match that I want to show you guys is on one of Clown's worst maps, which is Leary's Memorial. And those that have watched me in the past know one thing I hate the most about this map is how easy it is to have a very strong and successful chase when you're able to pre-run against the Clown. Due to our build and due to us getting a down and being able to play around the camping and the tunneling, that strategy of pre-running isn't very, isn't very viable because we're going to be right on top of you before your chase begins after we hook you. Yeah, I like Ots. Ots is a very nice guy. You know, my favorite my favorite part about Ots is just, you know, individually as a person, is he shares a very similar passion that I do with the game, you know? Like, looking at things in a very intricate and specific manner. I mean, he plays, he plays every other killer in addition to Clown, but I only play Clown, but, you know, not a lot of people are that way. We don't get the single. He's playing this very smart. It's actually something with how early this is and how it's first health safe. We get this out the way. He actually, the lad delay was huge. Ooh, it would have almost been huge on his part. Never mind. Do we get this anyways? He should have gone for other pallet. See, if he waited just a second longer before dropping that pallet, I wouldn't have gotten the refresh on my yellow and I wouldn't have been able to get that type of value. I don't have any bottles left for this, damn. I just realized we're on my fucking least favorite map. He's gonna hold W, smart. Y'all see this, right? Like, y'all see this, right? What even is this? Good shit, a, uh, FOV, FOV uh, be paying dividends somewhat. We're gonna commit to this chase because I gotta commit to something at this point. Y'all see that? I summoned the tornado last second, you know what I mean? Sometimes I get a little bit concerned about survivors having the momentum to make it back to a pallet, so in order to slow them down, I use airbending to summon up a tornado and slow their advance. It's a real legit comp strategy. This map is complete, it's complete bullshit, isn't it? Yeah. Someone else could be coming this way from the other side. Yep, that's what I figured. This prevents dead hard. I'm doing this to prevent dead hard. Oh, amazing. Smart. That was smart. I fucked that up. We commit with yellow. Window CJ? Did he just try to window CJ me? I think he did. The tornado comes in close, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Steve's had enough of this perk, dude. He's had enough of the perk. Oh, wow. Actually, smart pathing. Fuck. He's got good pathing, I gotta say. This team's actually really good. We get him through Bleach. Bleach means he don't make it. Stupid ass fucking game, dude. What even is this map? What is this map? Good shit. This is a good team, by the way. This is actually a really good team. No shit, this is a good team. Actually a good team. Oh my gosh, should have pain rest. I, I thought he was on death hook. I fucked that up care terribly. Okay, let's get let's force Grim uh Grim Embrace then. Beautiful. We already kicked this pallet, beautiful. We get pain rest here. Pain rest after Grim Embrace, that's actually huge by the way. That's actually really, really huge. We're gonna wait this off a bit actually. Hold up, wait off DMS. Beautiful. Beautiful. Y'all see that? Grim Embrace active. Oh my gosh, this shit is amazing, y'all. Look at it. Look at the value of the build. The build and the gin power. The power. He's on death hook, isn't he? I think he is. Problem is map design. Yes. There are still a couple of perks that need some touching on. But at the moment, DBD's problem is absolutely just map design. For the most part, yeah. I'd say I'd say the biggest part is mostly just map design. They've done a great job. You know, I call spades for spades. There are still some areas where some still sometimes where I really very feel like it's fair to criticize the devs and their design decisions. But they've done a lot. They've done a lot. And right now, yeah, it's mostly just map. You're gonna blind? No, you don't. It's fine. We kick. Good stuff. They've done a lot. They fixed a lot of the problems. Notice I didn't go for that yellow because I knew he wasn't playing window. Oh my gosh, dude. This motherfucker. <laughs> I like this team. They're good players. These, these, these are good players. All right, now we get the paid res here, by the way. Oh no. Oh no, the unbreakable. Oh yeah, MFT and debt. We kick this because the other person's injured and they can't contest. See, like I said, they can't contest. They literally, even if they tried for it, they can't contest. Eh, fine. Fine. You want to chase, I give it to you. There we go. Why thrilling? 
because, Matt, it's, it's, it's part of the combo. It's the wombo combo. Basically, you pick up, you apply thrilling. If they stay on the gen so you don't apply thrilling, they have to get off to avoid the pain res. If they don't avoid the pain res, they get hit with DMS. If they get off to avoid the pain res, they still get the pain reg uh, res regression. The DMS will... I'm going to give them a little bit of time and distance. We know you're going to hold W. I fucked that up. That other pink meant to be cross up, by the way. I can't hit that. Oh, I can't hit that. Shit, let's go. I'm kicking my feet. This fucking game, dude. Yeah, I didn't see that shit coming, did you, bub? Didn't see that shit coming, did you? That was calculated. Oh. Yes, my favorite pallet on the map. I like this guy. He's good. This David's good. GG's. Makes it look further. I love this FOV, by the way. This FOV definitely does help a lot. We're still learning our bottle angles and placements, but the FOV helps out so much with our current sensitivity on controller with handling these spins. Have we been spun once? I think like one time the whole night. And that was when I was like, I was like, okay, let me lock in a bit and like actually wake up type shit. Like first game like type shit. Like the FOV is actually good stuff. What game do you play besides DVD? I'm playing Power World, honestly. I, I am. I have jumped on the Power World bandwagon, but I've been playing it by myself. Play. Oh, hey, look, he got his hat done. So not only did we get Leary's, which, as I've said before, is one of Clown's worst maps, but the survivors did get a lot of clustered early gen progress, and our first hook didn't come till almost 90 seconds after the match had already begun. So with all that taken into account, it's all, for, with all things considered, given that we didn't have corrupt intervention, we should have lost a generator or had been very close to have been losing a generator by the time we were picking up the ace and getting our first hook. However, you can go back and check, we didn't actually lose our first generator until about five minutes after we had gotten that first hook. Why? Because not only did we get the pain residence, but we also got just so much consistent gen blocking value from the rest of our perks. We got Thrilling Tremors into Grim Embrace, into Dead Band Switch, and we were able to get not only a second secure for a later tunnel out after, but the teammates of the person who were getting tunneled when we downed and hooked them, we were able to not only proxy them while they were on the hook, but we did the same thing. We applied the Pain Res, we applied the Grim Embrace, and we applied the DMS. And that's really what it's all about. Is being able to just rotate these gen blocking perks in sequence in order to just stall out survivors to a point where now they are the ones who aren't able to compete with you through efficiency. Because again, that was Clown's main problem. Clown wasn't able to compete with survivors' efficiency. Now we have reached a situation where the shoe's on the other foot. 
And that's what makes this so ingenious. Now, all of that being said, I do expect these perks, like I said, the perks of the build to get nerfed. Do not expect DMS and Grim Embrace to just sit unabated. The developers have already said in their previous notes that they are aware of this perk combo and that they are tentative of the synergy. I'm pretty sure that it, it that's not, like I said, it's, it's not going to go get away unscathed. And with that, I'd say that just about covers everything. Now, I understand this build, again, may seem very simplistic, and some people might be wondering why I spent so much time talking about this build, let alone having three different examples of this build being used in action. But I really wanted to demonstrate both some really strong matches that I had in a single session. They were also somewhat similar, but also a little bit different with respect to what actually took place within the matches themselves. You know, keep in mind, let's kind of walk back what happened. Wrecker's Yard, we had some tunneling action and we did have a little bit of body blocking. But on our second match on Area Crows, we had survivors that tried to stick to efficiency and they let their survivor not only hit second state, but also die on first hook. And from that point, they weren't even able to complete any generators afterward because not only were they down a teammate, but we had a couple inju uh, some injury pressure from previously, and we just kept repeating the cycle process of pain res into DMS with the Grim Embrace. And lastly, in that third match, you know, with Leary's, even though they had that great momentum with having, you know, stalling out my first chase, taking advantage of the strength of the tiles on the windows and the pallets, they likewise still could not finish that first generator for such a long period of time because we just kept hitting them with the cycle, thrilling tremors into pain res into DMS. It's just so dirty, you know? So I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. I'm going to be looking to come up with more content, of course, in the future, more builds and more interesting ideas. Likewise, if you're interested in learning how to play clown better, I have a very extensive clown guide that I'm also going to be looking to periodically update this year. I'll have a link to my clown guide in the description. And lastly, I stream live on Twitch during the weekdays, which is when these matches were filmed. So if you'd like to see these matches yourselves in person, maybe interact with me and also ask questions, I'll have a link to my stream in the description as well. But other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this and I'll see y'all next time. Later gang!